Hey guys, Tom Boothlay here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will discuss the large block method for heart rate determination. If you enjoy this content, I hope you will like and share and subscribe to my channel. In the last video, we introduced the six step method for 12 lead ECG interpretation and step one was rate and rhythm. And in that video, I said that it's very important that we verify the computerized measurement of the heart rate with our own eyes. And one of the easiest ways to do that, at least with regular rhythms, is what we call the large block method. Pretty much everyone learns this in school, whether you're a physician, nurse, or paramedic, but very, very few people take the time to really commit this to memory. Once you do that, it is the gift that keeps on giving your entire career long because you'll be able to identify whether or not a heart rhythm is a bradycardia or a tachycardia at a glance. So we're going to go through this today. And at the very end, I'm even going to show you a scenario where this information could be life-saving. So let's get started with an EKG showing a heart rate of 50. So in the large block method with a regular rhythm, if the heart rate is 50, there should be six large blocks in between R waves. So if you take a look at this ECG right here and say, okay, is there an R wave that lines up perfectly or as close to perfectly as we can get um, with a line of a large block? So uh, in this case, I just picked this one here in lead V1 because it looks like that R wave, at least that notch in that R wave lines up pretty good. And so if we start here and start counting, we have one, two, three, four, five, six large blocks in between these R waves, proving that this heart rate, uh, that the computer is correctly analyzing this heart rate at 50 beats per minute. All right, let's try uh, 60 beats a minute. So in this ECG, a lot going on here that we could talk about, but uh, for now, let's just look at this heart rate, which is 60. So how many seconds are there in a minute? There are 60 seconds in a minute. And how many large blocks on the ECG plate, uh, paper make up one second? Well, five large blocks make up one second. So there should be five large blocks in between R waves. So if we find an R wave that lines up um, with a large block, we can find one, um, not perfectly, but let's use this one in lead V4. And if we start counting, we have one, two, three, four, five. So again, proving that this heart rate is 60. All right, let's try 75. Um, so for 75, we should have um, four large blocks in between our waves. So looking at this ECG, if we start right here and lead one, because that lines up nicely with a large block, we can count out one, two, three, and four proving that the heart rate on this ECG is correct at 75 beats a minute. How about 100 beats a minute? Okay. Um, well, in that instance, we should have three large blocks in between cardiac cycles. So if we look at this ECG and start right here, we can count out one, two, three, proving that uh, this heart rate is being accurately measured at a rate of 100. Let's go up even higher and look at an ECG with a heart rate very close to 150. The computer is measuring it, this heart rate at 147. Well, for heart rates that are very close to 150, we should have about two large blocks in between cardiac cycles. So if we look here and pick one of these R waves, let's pick this one right here and lead AVR and start counting. We have one, two large blocks in between R waves, proving that this heart rate is about 150. What about heart rates even faster? Um, well, it's rare, but occasionally we see heart rates very close to 300, especially in patients with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome who end up going into one-to-one -one atrial flutter. So if we take a, a look at this particular case, um, we should have only one large block in between cardiac cycles. So go ahead and pick any one of them. I'll use this one in lead one and boom, we can see that we have one large block in between our waves. So 
Um, that is how we use the large block method for heart rate determination. This is super, super helpful because if we have more than five large blocks in between our waves for a regular rhythm, we know that we're dealing with a bradycardia. Whereas if the R to R interval is tighter than three blocks, we know we're dealing with a tachycardia. Uh, but there are some actual situations here. You know, this isn't just a parlor trick, right? So if we get into this useful habit of thinking about the large block method, there are actually situations where it could be potentially life-saving. Let me give you an example, okay? So um, in this particular case was a 89-year-old uh, a female who, whose chief complaint was general weakness. And when paramedics arrived on scene, she was actually peri-arrest. And so they put her on the cardiac monitor and it was regular, it was wide, and it was fast. And they said, oh my gosh, she is in VTAC. And the cardiac monitor was counting this heart rate at 255. Um, I don't think that the paramedics really zeroed in on this, um, the heart rate of 255. They just looked at it and it was regular, wide, and fast. And so they diagnosed this as VTAC and they treated it as VTAC. And this patient did not have a good outcome. So let me ask you a question. Is the heart rate 255 here? Well, no. Uh, if we use the large block method here and start at this R wave in lead three and count out, we have one, two, between two and three large blocks between these R waves. So in reality, the heart rate here is between 100 and 150 not 255. In fact, there's about 12 small blocks in between our waves. So if we use the small block method uh, for heart rate determination, we can calculate this heart rate at about 125, which is about half the computerized heart rate of 255. Well, for life-threatening hyperkalemia, sometimes the cardiac monitor double counts the heart rate. This is called Littmann's sign. And so you'll also notice, an astute observer might also notice that in this case, the computer is measuring the QRS complex at 128 milliseconds, when in reality, this is more of what we call a sine wave ECG. And these QRS complexes, they're so merged together between the QRS and the ST and the T wave here, it's become um, like a sine wave ECG. So this is actually life-threatening hyperkalemia. So had the paramedics known about the large block method, they would have realized that this was not VTAC because the heart rate is only, I mean, theoretically, it's, is it possible that VTAC could have a rate of 120, 125? Yeah, it's possible. This has been referred to as slow VT um, in the past meaning that this is a, we really need to think about an electrolyte derangement in this case, because rather than uh, synchronized cardioversion or amiodarone, what a patient like this actually needs is calcium gluconate or calcium chloride to stabilize the transmembrane potential, which could be life-saving. Uh, so guys, this has been our crash course in the large block method for heart rate determination. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave me um, comments on my videos. Let me know what you would like to see. Thanks again for joining me. Hope you guys have a great day.